The subject today is a rotary gate. This is called raised rotary magnetic gate. Anyone who has attempted to make a magnetic gate will understand that it is very difficult. In the free energy movement, we're trying to get more power out than we put in. Magnets have been long sought after as a source. Some of the problems, this is a north facing, this is a eighth by three quarter inch neo, and the north is on this side. As we approach the gate, we would hope that it would draw it in in order to fire, but instead we see a resistance. This is called input resistance. Many of the videos I've seen, they don't show it from this point. Usually they show it from the firing point and it looks like there's something to it. But we have a loss at the beginning, so a gain as a net, there is none. Also, if you get close enough, it will pull it back. That's called output resistance. So I've come up with a development. If you've ever attempted this, to get one gate that works, well is doing very good. You can see my dimensions in iron plate 3 16th by 2 inch by 3 inch and I have some neos on the back half by half by 3 quarter. As we approach the gate we would expect again an input resistance pushing back against it. This is also very free moving uh, for a bearing, I put a bolt and a nut, put some WD-40 on it. I have a balancing weight back here, so it moves very freely. And if there's uh, any significant amount of power or push, we would show it up. So it's uh, very small if there is any. So we're coming into our gate. Go back a little bit more. I'm going to get just where there's no or very little input resistance. So we're coming up to the firing point. A good gate will actually draw the rotor in. And we can see that this is the case. Draws it in. The other part of a good gate is the push as it comes through. We want it to push without pulling back. And even if we're close to the uh, point where it would lock up on the other one, we can see it's pushing through. Try that again. These little uh, magnets on the ends, they reduce the input resistance very significantly. Okay, we're coming in. You can see just a little bit if we want to make it really accurate. So we're coming in with very, very little input resistance. The magnitude of the output is much more than anything that's pushing back. So this is a gain. We call that a net gain. It takes little power to fire it and we get more movement out of it. Those of you that are new to this, if we have a weight and we want to move it, say a foot, then we physically move it. We have to move it by hand, we have to have a motor, wind power, something. It does not move on its own. So this is where the magnetic properties have been long sought after as a source to move it freely. And if we could do that, then we could have a self-running magnetic motor. This may be the first steps of something like that. But it still happens that when we add several of these magnets together in a circle, whatever small resistances that are in there, they magnify and build up extremely fast. So you don't have a complete rotation. So here we go again. We're coming up. Very, very little. A little bit there. I'll just move it back some. Also, you can adjust this up and down. 
I'm not going to try and do anything there now. I'll just move it backwards. Okay. So it draws it in instead of push back, and it pushes instead of pull back. So these are the requirements of a very, very good gate. Okay. Now we're going to try and put two of the gates together. I found out if I went in a semicircle, the small resistance is built up. So I went ahead and made it perpendicular, and we'll see how that works. So we're coming into our gate, very, very, very little. It's not enough to uh, push back even on the small resistance that are given by the bolts there. come in there and we fire it. So now we have even more distance there. And I'll put another one here. So the rotor actually goes a little bit slower as I keep adding magnets because the small input and output resistances are building up. But we're still having more output than input. So here I am coming up Let's say I move it uh, an inch to get it in there. Instead of an inch, I get uh, perhaps a foot or so. Takes a lot of patience. Here we go. So we got uh, quite a distance there. So what we're doing is normally we move an inch, we get an inch. An inch, we get an inch. Move an inch, we get an inch. But here we moved it an inch and we got another foot or more. So this is what we're seeking to have more output than the input. So this is your free energy uh, movement that we have today. So I hope you take this and have a lot of fun with it, if nothing else, and even improve on it. Thank you very much.